Did you know that elephants are susceptible to sunburn? Or that they can hear with their feet? And that their sense of smell is considered the strongest in all of the animal kingdom and allows them to smell a water source from up to 12 miles away? We share our time with them and what you need to know before booking any elephant tour. Welcome back to Finding Jean Marie. We share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. Like most people, we find elephants fascinating. And being here in Southeast Asia, we really understand how much they've played in Thailand's history and culture. They represent royalty, good luck, prosperity. We knew we wanted to see them in person. We chose Elephant Nature Park, which is about one and a half hours away from Chiang Mai city center, mainly because we did some research and really understood how they treat their elephants and how we could interact or not interact with them. In this video, we take you along with us as we spend half a day with them and share everything we learned. And at the end of this video, we'll share everything we learned about what's good and what's bad about certain elephant parks and how you can spot what you need to know before you go. We booked our tour directly with Elephant Nature Park, which is an elephant rescue and rehabilitation site. And we booked directly with them because we didn't want to take a chance that some other tour company was going to direct us to some other facility. We wanted to make 100% sure that we were going to an ethical place. Elephant Nature Park has been a role model for how you treat animals ethically for over 30 years, and they're well known globally. We were picked up from our hotel around 7.30 and we arrived about 9 a.m. They gave us a quick tour of the facilities. Uh, we were able to get coffee or get prepped before we had our tour. And within 20 minutes, we were heading outside. Walking through the food preparation area was enlightening. Healthy elephants eat 200 to 300 kilograms or about 12% of their body weight every day. The one, they don't have a good teeth anymore. We feed the one without, we peel it for them. So we feed the grandma. Mm -hmm. And the one that's still with good, good teeth, they can eat with the whole thing. Okay. And, and sometimes we also feed some cucumber, sweet uh, corn. One way you can support the elephant park is by sharing your birthday, anniversary, or other special occasion with the elephants and having a cake made. There are different size cakes that you can choose at different price ranges, and you can even choose which elephant you want to get the cake or have a big enough cake that the elephant can share. And they're made in-house using local ingredients that farmers nearby have produced, which also helps the economy for local people as well. And so you get to enjoy the experience. They'll send you a picture and video of the elephant enjoying their cake. We had no idea what to expect. And so we were absolutely delighted that we could be very, very close to the elephants. It is extremely cool to be so close with the elephants, but also understanding that even though some of them will allow you to touch them, the park refuses to allow that to happen just so that the animals feel safe and protected and relieved from all of the touching and interruption of some of their daily activities. Yeah, this is more important for the elephants to be happy than the visitors. Which is a great philosophy. Excellent. Our first elephant that we had a chance to meet here is Lucky, and she's a female. There's about 120 elephants on site, and most of them are female. We had no idea how versatile dirt could be. While it might seem like a peculiar and messy habit, elephants toss dirt on their backs to regulate body temperature, warmth as well as coolness, as a natural sunscreen to repel insects and protect against their diseases, to exfoliate, to mark their scent, and as stress relievers and to promote relaxation. I never find dirt relaxing. It's not one of my things. <laughs> Watching the elephants actually enjoy these treats was really wonderful. All of the fruit being consumed is really just considered a snack. They eat about 50 kilograms per elephant in just fruits and vegetables. Each day. <laughs> 
And they spend about 60% of their day foraging for food when they're in the wild. And that's mostly grass and bamboo, but also roots and other wild herbs and plants. We were surprised to see water buffaloes here, and there's quite a lot of them. Gotta watch out for those horns. I know. And that's because Elephant Nature Park also rescues other animals besides elephants. Yeah, and the water buffaloes and the elephants have an interesting interaction. Some of them are fine with the water buffaloes, some are a little more skittish. Uh, some water buffaloes just kind of roam randomly, like I was taking video of one of the elephants and felt this bump from behind me. I just thought one of the other visitors was bumping into me. It turns out it was a water buffalo just nudging me out of the way. Remember, this is not a zoo. There's no fences for the most part. There are some, we'll talk about those later. But for the most part, the animals are out wandering about. And these are massive animals. Even the water buffaloes are big. So when, a, when the, one of the guides says, move, because an elephant may be moving or maybe skittish from something, you move because if they step on you, it's an accident, but it's not going to be comfortable no matter how you think about it. These are still wild animals, and although many of them have been trained uh, to be around people, sometimes they don't know their own strength and they can hurt someone without meaning to. I was a little concerned when I saw some water buffaloes being kind of pushed aside by some of the workers, but that's because they knew that specific elephants were very afraid of certain water buffaloes. And so they really were doing their best to help the elephants not be overly stressed, but at the same time giving the water buffaloes space to roam. Yeah, they know exactly what happens when there's too many people or too many animals in one spot and they work really hard to keep everything calm. The whole idea here is some of these elephants were abused, they're very stressed out, and they wanna keep everybody happy. We really don't wanna spend a whole lot of time dwelling on some of the abuse that these animals have faced, but the guy did point out a couple of things that were noteworthy. Hair being missing on elephants' backs and that their backs were bowed from being ridden. Some had damaged ears and tails from being trained and mistreated from circuses and other performing activities. There was damage to limbs and joints from being forced to do heavy labor like logging, and even landmine injuries that damaged feet. And although there are veterinarians to take care of the elephants, they can't be operated on because the wounds after surgery need to be kept very clean. And that's just not the way elephants live. They throw the dirt around. One of our favorite things was watching this baby elephant who'd take a mud bath. But before we talk about it, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. A video with the details is linked in the description below. This may not look like a four-year-old, but it certainly played like one. And it was thoroughly enjoying rolling around in the mud. In addition to acting as a natural coolant and sun protectant, uh, insect repellent and other beneficial physical properties, it's just an opportunity to have fun, to bond, to interact, and just play. And I didn't realize how stressed elephants can be, but this is also a great stress reducer and provides a tactile sensory experience that helps to stimulate their mental acuity. Maybe that's why adults like mud baths too. <laughs> Not me. This baby elephant was rescued with its mother, but its mother is not among the elephants that are playing with it. There are some elephants that are more maternal than others, and these particular females just have a very close bond with this baby elephant and are very nurturing of it. Elephant Nature Park tries to offer a variety of environments so the elephants can be as comfortable as possible. And one of those is having a river right through the park. And we watch the elephants walk over to the river, not necessarily to cool off, but just to have some social time. Similar to mud baths, they, it allows elephants just to hang and play and bond with each other and kind of strengthens the relationships within the group. Bathing in groups fosters herd dynamics, reinforces family bonds, and results in a sense of belonging and security among elephants. And these reasons are so important to the good health and welfare of elephants that a good ethical park won't allow uh, tourists to be bathing the animals.
The great part about going to one of these parks is that you get to ask questions. And we were curious about the elephant's sleep schedule. We were told that they sleep lying down about four to five hours a day. Well, elephants older than 50 take naps standing with their trunk on the ground. And all of the elephants here are contained at night to keep them from roaming into local farmland. Elephant Nature Park is intending to purchase more land so the elephants will have more area to roam, but they're at the mercy of the government to be willing to sell additional land to them. Speaking about elephant personalities, one elephant was not happy that she couldn't go and play with the baby when it went to get food. Apparently when these two get together and we're around food, they're harder to control. The goal with this park is always to keep every elephant happy and having to <laughs> restrain them more because they're getting a little wild is not what they wanted to. But you can see that this elephant was a little miffed. <laughs> they, they always run together. They, when they're together, they don't listen to the guy who takes them. <laughs> They let them play, but sometimes they, they always run to people together. Now she 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 a bit upset. Oh, I'm planning. Is it that? <laughs> Why you keep this so big? The workers seem to know each of them and their preferences, what makes them skittish, what makes them happy. So it's very cool that there's an in-depth understanding of each of the elephants. Yeah, that was impressive that every single elephant needed special care in some different way because every elephant has different uh, problems or different needs. And they really knew what they were doing with each one of these. One of the things we didn't expect was seeing that the male elephants are kept in individual spaces because they're more aggressive and tend to fight with each other. So 90% of them have never been broken and they're wild animals. They're also bigger and harder to train. And while that might mean that there are fewer in captivity, they do need to be protected from poachers and they sometimes have medical concerns. There's more female elephants here because they're much easier to have their spirit broken. So you'll mostly find females in circuses and in performing acts. And male elephants are expensive to rescue. They cost between two to three million dollars because of their size, which requires more equipment. And while it's good that they might not be broken animals, they aren't used to being around humans and they're more dangerous to their rescuers. And they're more expensive to keep and maintain because of their size. And of course, it's all about funding and resources which puts a priority on rescuing as many elephants as possible, which means female and young elephants. In addition to male elephants being segregated from the rest, elephants that are sick are also separated. We saw one that was being treated and we were told not even to go up to the fence because they could be irritated. One of the things we really liked about this park is how much education and information they have splattered everywhere. And it talked about the difference between Asian and African elephants. The government, at the beginning, people, they will use elephants for working in a farm, for transportation, and for walking. In Thailand, the government banned elephant logging in 1989. So after they banned elephant logging, or elephant circus, and how each elephant in the park had before and after pictures showing how the park has helped them heal. And if you go to their website, they have a ton of information about each individual elephant, including the herd that they belong to and all of their history. We have a link below in the description. We wrapped up our half day with a buffet style vegetarian lunch, and there was time to walk around the park afterwards and visit their skywalk. All right, let's talk about the things that you need to look out for when you're choosing an elephant park. We are not sponsored by Elephant Nature Park, and you can find ethical treatment of elephants in a lot of places. But here are some things that you need to look for. The first is that you shouldn't be able to ride elephants. They do not have backs that support any weight. So even though they're huge animals, they've never evolved to allow humans to ride them. And as far as bathing elephants, parks shouldn't allow people to be in the water with elephants or bathing them. The animals actually prefer to stay dirty. And when they're in the water, it's their playtime and their social time and a way to de-stress. Human interactions just aren't natural for them. And, and bathing with tourists can lead to anxiety, bruised skin from rougher and proper handling, and may cause aggression. You know, elephants are smart animals and they just value their independence. 
And it goes without saying that they shouldn't perform in any way. They shouldn't paint or perform tricks or play musical instruments. And the ones who had this training were abused to get them to learn these performing acts. It's not their natural habitat, and doing these tricks does not bring them happiness. And the place you go to should have limited access of everyday activities by tourists. They should focus on the elephants first and the tourists second. There should be no direct baby elephant interaction, and there should be access to veterinary care. The elephants should be free to roam, socialize, and engage in natural behaviors. And a park should prioritize their well-being and natural behavior of the elephants over any type of entertainment or profit. So what did we pay for this experience? It costs 2,500 Thai baht per person or $138.85 US for both of us. And that included transportation to and from our hotel to the park, a tour, and a vegetarian lunch. We need to make a 1,500 baht deposit and paid the rest in cash at the park. Of course, all the proceeds go directly to support the elephants. Although we took a half-day morning tour, there are also half-day afternoon tours and an opportunity to stay overnight and even volunteer opportunities if you want to help out more. We'll include links in the description on how you can donate to Elephant Nature Park or sponsor an elephant. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. We have several episodes coming from Thailand that you're not going to want to miss. And go to findgenomery.com we can find more information, articles about the Elephant Park, and our community forum. Until next time. Until next time.